Welcome to Britain, a developing country. A series where we visit the movers and shakers in the property development industry to find out what is happening across the UK. Stephen Galpin, one of our resident property experts, is one of the UK's leading property consultants and also a freeman of the City of London. In this programme, Stephen talks to David Morley, the founder of David Morley Architects, about a new 494 home development between the Derbyshire Dales and the town of Matlock. Tell us something about the journey that you've had in relation to the planning for this scheme. Well, I think the catalyst for this was uh, it's the changed environment of councils recognising the need to develop local plan with more homes. And there is indeed a demand in, in Matlock to satisfy that. And the time uh, we started work on it, which was at the beginning of 2016, we uh, were looking at the scheme at a time when the local plan was going to be reviewed and there was the potential to look at combining the brownfield site of the quarry with some greenfield land adjacent to it. And that was a key to enabling the very costly development within the quarry itself to become funded by some more profitable development. Right, OK, I understand. <clears throat> now, you're going to be building around 500 new homes, and this is going to be divided into five separate, what you call, spa villages. Yes, yes. Just explain that concept. Well, um, Matlock is a, traditionally a spa town, and mm -hmm. I think the UK has got a very powerful tradition of spa towns built uh, across the UK. And that's all about health and wellness and sense of community. And I think that's very topical at the moment, where uh, objectives, government objectives, NHS objectives, are to really recognise that the homes we design have an impact on encouraging people to have an active, healthy lifestyle. I personally am a very anti... Um, various forms of transport that are demonised and I particularly like with this scheme the way that what you've done is not demonise the motor car, you've dealt with it, you, you've hidden it yeah, away. Yeah, I mean that's, that's the key is I, I think the worst thing is to drive onto an estate and you're greeted by rows of parked cars and, mm -hmm. the, and the front door is hidden away. Agreed. The front doors here are on the pavement um, and the cars are tucked away either under buildings or in courtyards out of sight. The concept for Matlock Spa builds on the spa town tradition with health and well-being as a focus of the plan. This makes it very relevant to current initiatives by bodies such as the Health Commission, Sport England, the NHS and the Government, who all recognise that where we live affects our health and well-being and acknowledge that taking part in regular physical activity is crucial to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Despite the developments being so conducive to the government's social aims, we wanted to find out what the reaction to the plans of development has been like. With your planning, obviously that's taken some time to get through. What, what have been the sensitivities there? How have the local residents reacted to this scheme? Well, there's been an enormous support for developing the quarry. It's been, um, it's been vacant for a long period and uh, a huge um, willingness to, to support the scheme, except um, the development in the greenfield element and that's right. been the subject of a lot of discussion from the people that live immediately adjacent to it. And so um, we initially put a planning application in, in um, December in 2016 um, and we spent almost a year debating how we could reconcile the concerns of the local community with the uh, viability of the whole scheme and we had a very good dialogue with Derbyshire Dales Council who were okay. very supportive. Um, but we had to do a number of iterations to how, arrive at the right path. How, how did you rec reconcile the two interests? Well, it's balancing um, the ratios of uh, affordable housing and what we need to provide in terms of Section 106 agreements mm -hmm. with the extent of development um, outside of the, the brownfield land. It's the, the, the reason it's so costly is that the quarry looks absolutely amazing when you visit it. It looks, although it's a brownfield site, it looks incredibly green and verdant. And it's got this incredible richness of landscape across it. But underneath it, there is uh, a lot of uh, industrial waste. Yes. And that has to be dealt with, and it's very costly to deal with that. Right. Um, and so we have developed a scheme which has an element of development on easier-to-develop land, um, which is, includes some old industrial works and an element of greenfield as well. And that creates an overall equation which 
means that we can move forward with a viable overall scheme. Okay, in one of our previous programmes we've talked about 106 agreements and um, I, I, I've asked the question a number of times uh, about the relevance of 106 agreements. I'm, ve I'm very keen to see these agreements be relevant to the actual Absolutely. development yeah. and so often, especially in London, we see almost abstract yes. ideas coming in yes. um, which are simply adding to the cost of housing quite unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us typically what you've had to do f to, to satisfy yes. this agreement process. I think we've had a very good dialogue with the council on this and they recognise that you know, they, they have a role in helping make this scheme viable. We've got proportionate uh, contributions towards education and health, which I think is right. correct because we're bringing in potentially 1,500 new people into, yes. into the town. Um, but the most exciting thing is that um, we've really uh, had a win-win with a, a partnership which has been proposed with the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust. Right. And one of the challenges with this sort of development is we're giving away a lot of space to communal uh, ecology park. Uh, and how is that going to be managed in the future? And that's one issue we've dealt with. And the other one is how do we reassure the local residents that we're not going to develop all over the greenfield site mm, that course, yes. remains. And so we've reached a deal with them which will mean they will take on the management of the ecology park and they will also protect in perpetuity the greenfield areas they're taking on um, against further development. So, let's talk a little bit more about the development and the holistic plan for wellbeing. The vision embraces the natural setting and its many varied features, from cliff faces to lakes, and the open fields of the floodplain fronting onto the Derwent Valley Heritage Trail. This will be an active landscape offering opportunities for many outdoor pursuits including walking, cycling, fishing and space for informal and formal play for all ages. The Country Park incorporates a site of special scientific interest and the rich existing ecology will be enhanced with substantial new areas of habitat. Sensitively caring for the environment is paramount and Matlock Spa works with the existing landform and ecology to promote a natural setting which will be opened up to give more access for the community. However, it's all very well to have fantastic ideas such as this, but we have one important question. How will the management of these parks and facilities be uh, funded? So the funding is part of the Section 106 agreement where we will effectively give a diary to the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust. But another very important element is that we have incorporated a, a cafe in uh, what we've created a sort of community green, one of the spas called Village Spa. That's on a slightly elevated uh, platform, it overlooks the floodplain, and that's going to become a, a, an ecology interpretation centre and a cafe which Derbyshire Wildlife Trust will run. So they will secure an income from that, which will go back into the maintenance costs of the, uh, of the rest of the site. Perhaps you'd like to explain both to me and our viewers what, what an ecology interpretation centre is. One of the extraordinary things about uh, this landscape, and when I first went there, I was completely, I found it completely breathtaking because you've got this incredible richness of um, what's developed in the quarry. It's called post-industrial landscape because it's not very fertile ground. It actually developed some quite rare plants. So there's some incredible orchids there. Um, and the cliff is, uh, cliff face is a site of special scientific interest because of its geology. And then it's got lakes developed under the cliffs and then it's got a, a wetlands landscape which we're going to enhance and it's got a river frontage. So all of those elements attract a very special type of wildlife um, and fauna which we're going to preserve some of it, enhance some of it, translocate some of it. And that for the first time that is going to become open for the public to view and the interpretation centre is going to help them understand what it is they're seeing, what can be seen at a particular time of year. And what happens when the diary runs out? That's the beauty of the, the, the model of the cafe, which is that it'll give them a, a, an income. Right. And the diary's been calculated uh, to, to, to look at a long-term okay. investment. Now, you're, you're building approximately 500 units split between five villages. What, what, what are the, what's the breakdown of, uh, of accommodation? And what, what's the pricing of that accommodation? Has there been any thought to that yet? Oh, absolutely, yes, no, that's right. absolutely key. So we've, uh, we've got a very good range and mix, I think. So we've got um, uh, a, a range of 20% um, two-bed houses, 30% uh, three-bed houses, 
and 40% four-bed houses, and then 10% of five-bed houses. So there's a really nice range there, and the price value for the houses will range between around about 380,000 up to 750,000 for the, right. the top end. For the, 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 the most valuable plots will be, will be on the edge of the site overlooking the Peak District National Park. Right. And then we've got some apartments as well, um, where, which are mostly two bed apartments, and it's very much focused on, um, I think there's, there's a strong retirement market there, um, and we think that will be very appealing to people who want to live, again, very close to the town centre, uh, with the apartments with fantastic okay. views. And what about so, affordability for young people? Well, I think the small houses, so the two bed houses, is something which we've been very keen to introduce. So we've got um, some, some terraces, which is breaking away from the traditional mould of, uh, of semi detached houses. But it creates a much better sense of streetscape, um, and and those will be those will be very economic. And we've had a lot of interest already. Uh, we haven't started marketing yet, okay. but just through the planning process, there's been a, a huge flow of people inquiring. And what's interesting is that they've been inquiring about the range of properties in roughly the same proportion as we're providing. So I think oh, we're very encouraged by that. That is yeah. encouraging. Yeah. That's yeah. That, that's very good. Now, again, one of the criticisms of these type of villages, especially when they're in beautiful parts of our countryside, is that they tend to attract second home buyers. And this irritates local residents beyond belief. It, it, it's really a sore point in a lot of areas. So with your marketing, how, how do you propose to balance the actual type of occupation? Well, I think the, um, the range of facilities we've got in terms of the... Uh, the, the scale of the mix of units will be important. I think um, the, the fact is Matlock is a very mixed uh, economy and it, it will, uh, it's, it's within very easy reach of a very large population. Um, it's only 15 minutes from the M1. Mm -hmm. It's um, got a really good train connection. And so I think it will attract people who live and work in the area um, as well as people downsizing. I think that that's, that'll be... Uh, a key thing as well. David, we've talked about the planning process, we've talked about the type of apartments and uh, houses that you're going to provide. Talk to us a little bit in detail about the product now. Um, now, I, I, ha having come from that area of the country, myself, oh, I, do, yeah. I know that um, heating is going to be a particular um, hot topic, if you'll excuse the pun. Um, so what type of heating are these properties going to uh, utilise? We're going to have gas boilers in, in, in most of the properties, which is, is the most economic right. um, fuel, I think, to, to bring in. But I, the key thing is that there's so much we can do with a building envelope to um, create something which is as green as we can possibly make it. And so we'll be insulating above building regulation um, standards. Yes. And we'll be having well-sealed buildings. And, uh, and we're making the windows carefully considered so they get the right amount of daylight. We don't overheat. Um, but equally, we don't lose unnecessary. Yes, I noticed that insulation was quite a key point in your... Um, descriptive literature so that's that's that is a good good feature it's very important especially with again with younger people the economies of running a house are particularly important and um, again in London we've had great issues with what they call comfort cooling and comfort heating yes. I'm sure you know all about this and the costs absolutely run away yeah. and I think a move back to straightforward gas central heating yes. is probably the way to go well I, I like the idea of keeping it simple but also mm. I think uh, a lot of developments suffer from just having too much glass. Yes. And uh, it's, it's getting the window design right so you get the best view, you get the best daylight, but you don't have more than you need, and that's absolutely key. Matlock Spa has been broken down into five key phases of development. The first phase is known as Gateway Spa, which is the closest part of the development to Matlock Town Centre and has more urban scale. The plan sees the creation of three villas step up the slope along Matlock Spa Road and, to the south, nestling below the cliff, a four-storey loft apartment building, echoing the language of the Derwent Valley Mill buildings. The entrance to Matlock Spa is framed by these buildings and a rocky outcrop which gives an evocative reminder to the industrial heritage of Cawdor Quarry. 
Right, so talk to us about um, village number one then, that's, um, that's going to be started in October. That's going to consist of? So that's Gateway Spa, it's mm -hmm. going to be 75 homes, um, which includes 15 houses and, and 50 apartments. And so that'll be more urban in character. And so right. there'll be um, four apartment buildings. One of them we call Spa Lofts, and the idea is that it's a bit like a, a Derwent Valley Mill. One of the things that we've been very keen to achieve is that the quarry faces north, which is quite a challenge, but we want every single dwelling to have a sunny amenity space. So we have south-facing balconies, right. and then we have um, double-aspect apartments uh, so that they always get a view as well as a sunny aspect. And then we've got what we've called spa villas, which are three blocks, which are completely four square, um, four stories as well, and they step up the hill from the town. And I think they'll evoke something of the spirit of Bath or Buxton or some of the great spa towns in the UK. Um, yeah. and, and one of them uh, will have a, a, a shop underneath it. So okay. it'll give it a and, uh, in, in, in terms yeah. of social or affordable homes, are, are these included within the development or are these something you're perhaps providing elsewhere? I think the, the affordable homes is something which we it was long debated with the council and in the end they decided they would prefer us to not build on some green land and in return not deliver any affordable homes as such. However, um, I think the scale of the units we're proposing and the mix and the number of two-bed houses we've got in there and three-bed houses, I think will we'll give a very good range of prices and, and thereby make the scheme um, by default affordable. Yes, I've, I, do you know, I've often thought if developers simply made properties affordable, then the complexities of these 106 agreements insisting on particular percentages of affordable homes would actually disappear and, and would, would actually be catered for. Yes, I think that's... I, I, I don't think developers are completely void of uh, conscience or responsibility. You know, I, I, I think usually um, a developer is keen to fit with the environment and provide what's needed. That's very much the case, and we want to, this to be a mixed community yes. with uh, the greatest diversity we can get in the people that live okay. in here. Don't now, in terms of somebody looking at one of these properties and uh, looking in uh, Gateway Village, what sort of time scale are you looking at to build? So we're proposing to start on site um, in October of this year, and so the first phase will be about a year in, in, in completion. And the nice thing about the arrangement is that uh, we can develop the phases so that there's a complete landscape setting within each phase that we yes. create. So spa lofts, which should be the first bit, should be ready for occupation in October next year. Right, OK, I think that was going to be my next yeah, question, is right. how disruptive is um, phase two going to be to phase one yeah. and, uh, well, and onward a, through the development? Absolutely key point, because mm. this will take at best five years to develop the whole scheme, could be, could be a bit longer. Yeah. And so we've looked very carefully at the phasing and we've looked at a sequence whereby we can achieve a sense of completeness at every phase as we go through. And the beauty of our approach to um, the landscape is that this idea that one of the anchors that links together the spa villages is this ecology park. And part of the ecology park is celebrating what is already there under the cliff bases of the quarry and leaving much of that post-industrial landscape intact. And so that will already be there and uh, complete throughout all the, all the phases. What's immediately apparent with Matlock Spa is that there is clear emphasis on attention to detail and with the outstanding surroundings to the development, it would not have been in keeping with the ethos of the project to use standard or ordinary building materials. We've talked about heating, we've talked about design, we've talked about phasing. Talk to us about the materials you're using. I look at your brochures and there look to be some wonderful local materials being used there. Well, it was a limestone quarry, so limestone's got to be a, a big feature in the scheme and we'll be using some of the found, landscape, found limestone on the site to make some of the dry stone walling, which will be an important feature um, through de delineating private and public areas within it. And then the um, houses will be, the majority of them will be all clad in, in, in limestone. And there are a number of active quarries very near to the site. So we're very keen to use local materials mm -hmm. throughout the development. And interestingly, in the valley of Matlock, there are two stones. There's limestone and gritstone. Gritstone has a slightly more urban character, slightly more pinky tinge to it. And some of the, the great spa buildings um, in, in Matlock were built out of gritstone. So the apartments in Gateway Spa will be constructed from gritstone uh, walling. 
and the houses will be mainly limestone. Right, have you had any difficulty in uh, marrying up these traditional materials with sort of modern building practices within house? I'm talking about perhaps pre-constructed bathrooms or brought in off site. Well, we're definitely looking at that. So in some of the phases, we very much could lend themselves to some modular construction. Mm. Um, uh, and, uh, and uh, for example, Esplanade Spa, that's um, on the lower reaches of the quarry, we have a, a frontage onto the River Derwent, and so we're creating that in a bit of a spirit of a, of a river frontage development right. with, with pitched roofs which face uh, the river. And that, the module of that is designed so you could deliver it on lorries as a volumetric, and then you can clad it with stone. Right. So it, it won't look like modular housing, it'll look like it's um, been there a long time in Derbyshire, but it, it will exploit all of the technologies that we can. Well, to that, that's splendid. It, that's that's won wonderful yeah. to see such uh, coordination. It's really, really refreshing, I think, is the word. Um, now, I noticed to the rear of the site, there's, there's something there called a floodplain, which we've all been um, talking about for years now, building mm. on floodplains or building near to. Any issues with insurance for these villages? Well, fortunately, uh, the, the site and the old industrial works, which is adjacent to it, are about four metres above the floodplain, and so there isn't, we're not in a flood risk zone as right. such. However, the floodplain itself uh, is a moment agricultural land, and there's the remnants of an old oxbow lake in the middle of that, and sometimes a year that floods and sometimes it doesn't, and we want to make that into a, a really special feature of the scheme, so that'll become yeah. part of a wetlands landscape, and we will actually dig out a bit of the lake, so it becomes a permanent water feature within the site. And that's just one of the many ways in which we'll be And it'll have a great capacity too, won't it? Of exactly. Course. Yes. yes. So, yeah. so that, that, that's very good. Um, have the Environment Agency been involved in any of this um, oh, consultation? Oh yes, I mean, they, they're very much a, one of the statutory consultees and, uh, and, and they're comfortable with the And the you found, approach found them helpful? The yes, I think so. I don't think we're doing anything particularly controversial. Obviously they want to make sure we're not contaminating the water courses at all and so we'll have to have very good controls when we do the re-engineering work of the, the main quarry area. Of course. Yeah. Now, just in terms of some of the sensitivities that you've had to deal with, um, it is a disused quarry. What about any, any danger of contaminated land around? Well, that's part of the whole re-engineering process, is that we right. need to uh, either dispose of it, and we've done preliminary ground investigations, and there, isn't, um, there is not expected to be very much contamination. It's mainly... Right. The fact that the deposits, the post-industrial, the industrial deposits, are quite squidgy, so you can't build on them, mm. and so we need to scrape some of that away and relay it in compacted layers, or we need to cap it off and pile through it. And so there's different approaches to different parts of the quarry, um, and but clearly we need to leave something which is completely clean and uh, and risk-free in order to get the right certification for all of the houses. Of course, vision is one thing, but where the rubber meets the road for any developer is in a project saleability. And one aspect that is absolutely key to any major development's attractiveness to buyers is location and transport. Matlock Spa is located in the heart of the Derbyshire Dales, just 10 minutes walk away from the newly revitalised Matlock Town and a stone's throw from the Peak District National Park. The development is extremely well connected to England's extensive rail and road network adding a broad range of lifestyle option to its beautiful natural surroundings. How long would it take, literally, for somebody to walk from Gateway Village down into Matlock itself, into, into the town centre? It's about five minutes from the Gateway to the railway station, right. and then it's another three minutes to the town centre. So it is really very close, very, very okay. walkable. And the mainline services run to where? It goes, it's a branch line, it's, it's a wonderful line to travel on. It's got some beautiful stations. Paxton, Joseph Paxton designed Matlock Station, who, right. who's famous for what he did at Chatsworth, which is right. very close by. And it runs into Derby, and Derby's got a fantastic line to lots of places, including London, which is very good for us. It's only two and a half hours for us to get onto site. David, we've talked about Gateway Spa, which is the um, entree to the, mm. to, the, to the five different villages. Tell me, um, Describe the other three villages, the ones that we haven't talked about. We've talked about the first one, we've talked about the last one, but not the ones in the middle. Well, one of the things that really struck me when I first went to the site is that when you arrive, there's a rocky outcrop which has a, frames a view with cliffs on one side, the outcrop on the other, to the Derbyshire Dales beyond. And so that's going to be 
from Gateway Spa, the entrance, into the next spa village, which we've called Crescent Spa. Right. It leads you through to the quarry divides into two plateaus, an upper plateau and a lower plateau. The lower plateau is Esplanade Spa, which we talked about earlier. Yep. The upper plateau is Crescent Spa. And when we re-engineer the land, we're going to make it quite sinuous and create gentle crescents, again evoking the great spa town traditions. And from those crescents, you will get views up and down the, the valley and across to the town of, of Matlock. Okay. And from Crescent Spa, we move into... So then that leads through to an area of woodland. Again, quite a lot of those trees we're going to have to replace because they're, they're not in, in good health, but we're going to create new trees and we're going to create a series of woodland lodges nestled within the trees themselves. And they will be quite contemporary design. They will have a, a darker uh, linear brick cladding so that they will be more recessive in character. So when you look across from the other side of the valley, they don't stand out too much. So they'll be okay. nestled within the woodland. And, and, and they'll, be, they'll be for full-time homes again? Again, yes. Yep. They'll be, they, they will still be mostly for four-bedroom houses. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, but quite small pockets and with, with communal driveways. And then the, the route through gently leads down to what we've called Village Spa. Now, this is an important part of the development. There's, a, there's an old industrial works there which has a brick tower, which is about four storeys high. And we've proposed to retain the tower itself because it's a landmark which you can see from the Peak District National Park. And it sets a sort of memory of the heritage of the site. And I think it's yeah. really important to set off new, the new with the old. And we're going to retain some of the rusting old hoppers and make that into an artwork, which is a focal point of a community green, which is a, going to be a communal space, which has the cafe and interpretation center. It has the retained tower from industrial works and linked into that are some more apartments so that'll get a real focal point for what we've called village spa and then either side of that there will be a mixture of smaller houses and then some larger houses mm. where the density will decrease so we create a very soft edge to the fields and then the peak district national park beyond that when those houses will have green roofs so that they again they will when you look down from afar they will not stand out at all I have to say, you're to be congratulated on this scheme. It's really innovative, it's really refreshing, and I'm sure it's going to generate a tremendous amount of interest. So there you have it. Matlock Spa is a development with a clear vision for an enhanced quality and healthy living.